In this video, we'll try to understand what are action filters in MVC, in what scenarios we should use action filter, and how to code action filter in MVC. Now, action filters help you to perform logic while the MVC action is executing or after MVC action is executed. So sometimes, you know, what you'd like to do is, you know, before action executes, you'd like to execute some logic. And after the action executes, you'd like to execute some logic. So in those kind of scenarios, we use action filter. So for example, you know, while the action is executing, you'd like to do some validation check. And then you'd like to decide that, okay, should I cancel the action or should the action be allowed to be executed ahead, right? Or sometimes, you know, after the action is executed, you'd like to go and lock some information saying that, okay, the action is executed or it took this much time, etc., right? So in other words, you know, whenever you want to do pre-processing and post-processing logic, you will use action filter. Now there are two ways by which we can create an action filter. One is, you know, we can create an inline action filter or second is we can create an action filter attribute. So what we'll do is let's go ahead and see a simple example of how to create an inline action filter. And then we will see how to go and create action filter attribute. So in order to understand uh, the action filters, let's go ahead and demonstrate it. So I have selected here ASP.NET 4 template. You can see I'm creating a new project. I've selected the web section and in the web section, I've selected ASP.NET MVC 4. Now, whatever, whatever steps I'm demonstrating here will remain true for MVC 2 and MVC 3 as well. Okay. So I'm going to go and select this MVC 4 web application template. I've given a name here saying MVC action sample. So let me just click OK. Let's go and, uh, you know, select a clean template. So let's select this empty template here and uh, the view engine is ASPX and let's say OK. So there we have our basic application uh, of MVC. So I, I will go and first add a very simple controller here. So I'll just go and add a com controller here saying uh, uh, sample filter, okay, sample action filter, big name. And in this sample action filter, let's go ahead and uh, create a simple view here called as, let's say, index view. So you can see that we have this simple action here called as index, right? So we'll just go and create a very simple view here saying index view. Um, and uh, this, in this index view, I'll just put a simple text here saying, hello, this is demo of action filters, right? Now, what we'd like to do is, you know, we'd like to go and put some pre-processing and post-processing logic uh, by using action filters for this index action. So, you know, when this index action is invoked, right, we'd like to go and probably, uh, you know, write some text or something. You know, we'd like to go and make some log entry into a file saying that, okay, the action has started and the action has ended. Okay. So, in order to put those pre-processing logic, the first thing what we need to do is we need to actually go and implement the I action filter interface. Now, if you go and implement this interface, right? So I'm going to go and right click and implement the interface. Now you can see that we have two events here. One is on action executed and the other one is on action executing. So if you want to put a pre-processing logic, that logic will go here. So here's where we can go and put the pre-processing logic. And if you want to go and put a post-processing logic, then it will go over here. Okay. So this is for post-processing logic. So in simple words, before the index fires, right? Before this index action fires, this on action executing event will fire. And after the index action has completed, the on action executed event will fire, right? Now what we'll do is, um, let's go ahead and uh, just put some simple trace information into a file. So what I'll do is I'm going to go and import a uh, system.diagnostic namespace. So I'll just say a system.diagnostic. And I will go and write some trace information saying that, okay, trace dot write line action is executing, right? And uh, here I'll say trace dot write line action has executed. Probably we would like to just go and put a data and time over here so that we can know, uh, you know, when this event fired. So date and time. So action has executed at this time. And here also action is executing at this time. Great. Now let me just go and build this. 
right so build succeeded nice now we have written your trace dot right line you know but we also need to define where this trace information will be saved right should it be saved to a file or even viewer right so for that we need to go and define uh, more details about it in the web.config file so here we have to go and define the system dot diagnostic details so what i'll do here is i'll say here okay system dot diagnostics so i would like to go and send these details to a file probably we would like to go and send that trace information to a c drive and in the c drive we'll probably create a file saying uh, you know log.txt so for that you know we need to go and define a listener so i'm going to go and copy paste this code here which i have so you can see i have defined a listener here and i'm saying that in the listeners uh, you know that please go and use the text writer trace listener and write the log information to c drive in log.txt file right and also we need to go and say that you know automatically flush the information so for that we need to go and define the trace tag here and we are saying that okay trace auto flush equal to true in other words as soon as the trace trace information is written just flush out the information in this log.txt file here okay um okay we also need to go and enter trace here so very quickly slash trace All right so now that we have defined our trace details now what should happen is that the time i go and invoke this index action you know it should go and write this trace information to this c drive file here uh, in in the log.txt right so let me just go and run this application so i'm going to go and do a control f5 so there our application is running but we need to go and invoke the appropriate controller and action so currently our controller name is sample action filter and we need to go and invoke this index action so let me just go and run this so you can see that he has displayed the view here now let's go to our c drive so let's go to our c drive and in our c drive we should find log.txt you can see that we have a file here called as log.txt and if you open this you can see here he has recorded you know uh, the action executing uh, event and also the action executed event so if i go and run this again let's say if i go and do a refresh here and if i open this file again i will find one more entry of this action executing and the action executed event so this was a simple demonstration you know how we can go and 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 use action filters you know on controller now this implementation is fine but there is a slight problem with this implementation now whatever code i have written in this on action executed and on action executing event right i cannot reuse this logic in some other controller so currently whatever logic i have written can be only used within this controller that is sample action filter controller but let's say if i go ahead and i create some other controller like home controller or some other controller right i cannot reuse this logic you know so for those kind of scenarios we need to convert you know this logic into a action attribute or action filter attribute right so in order to implement a action filter attribute what we can do is we can create a complete new class here saying public class let's say my action filter and the next step what we need to do is we need to inherit from the action filter attribute class and implement the i action filter interface right so let's go ahead and implement this interface and what i'll do is i'll just copy paste you know the previous code over here so this on action executed code will go over here the on action executing will go over here and i will remove you know this code you know from the controller so i'm going to go and delete this and also I'll delete this interface right so now you can see the code is completely moved from the controller to a separate class called a class called as my action filter right now if i wish i can take this my action filter and apply it to any controller i want so when you create an action filter attribute right you can reuse it across controllers so let me just go and build this so there it is now if you want to use this my action filter you know over this controller here what we need to do is we need to just go and 
say here my action filter so you can see now i'm able to decorate you know my controller using this my action filter which i've created so if i now go and run this application let me just quickly go and build it and i'll go and delete this log.txt file here uh, you know to just see that if really this is working or not so there i am running my application again slash sample action filter slash index so there our application has ran and you can see now he has created a fresh log.txt file here and if i open it you can see that he has fired the action executing and the action executed event so there are two ways of creating action filter one is the inline action filter where the logic resides inside the same controller and second is we can go ahead and create a separate filter altogether a separate attribute altogether and then we can reuse that attribute you know on 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 different controllers now this implementation is good you know but um, when i look at the log.txt file right i don't find too much information here so it is just telling me okay some action is executed but which action is executed what is the name of the action nothing is uh, mentioned in this log.txt file right so if you want to go and log you know the method names or the action names right uh, you know you can use this filter context over here so uh, in this filter context uh, we have action descriptor so we can say here okay this action name was executed at this time in the same way I can say even over here this action is executing at this time so with this I can know that you know if the index action is executing or some other action is executing what I can also do is I can just go and copy paste this action here let me go and create one more action here saying let's say my index okay so now if I run this index it will show me that index was executed at this time if I run my index, it will it will tell me that my index was executed at this time. Okay, so let me do a control F5 here and uh, sample index. So if I run this and if I now go to my log.txt file, it is now saying me that okay the index action has been executing at this time. Now if I go back again here and if I say my index my index okay so this will just say here the return the viewers index okay right so now if i go and and execute my index action and now if i go again to my log.txt file it is now telling me that okay my index has executed so by using um you know the filter context right uh, you can you can uh, actually know that uh, what is the action what has been executed uh, you know you know at that time now you know when we started this tutorial i said that you know we can also cancel the execution right so in case you know when this on action executing event is happening and you would like to go and cancel the execution what you can do is you can go and write here filter context dot uh, result and i can say here you know please redirect to let's say questpond.com okay so now what will happen here is now what will happen here is basically this on action executing event will happen it will redirect to questpond.com and the on action executed and the action will not fire so if i go and build this now very quickly and if i run this application so only the on action executing event will fire but the on action executed and the action will not fire so if i press enter you can see now it has redirected to questpond.com right and if i go to the log.txt file you can see that only the executing event has fired but the executed event has not fired so if you want to go and cancel the execution you can use this filter context.result and then you can give a object of new redirect result you know to this result property over here so I hope that you have enjoyed this video. In this video, we were trying to understand what exactly are action filters, when to use them and how to code action filter. Thank you so much.